Isaiah tells us that my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, thus says the Lord. So what are the ways of God, we might ask? Well, Jesus spends most of his ministry trying to answer that question for the people. And he does so by saying, the ways of God are like. The words are usually translated, the kingdom of God is like, or the kingdom of heaven is like. But that's where Jesus is going with those stories. 35 to 45 times, Jesus says, the realm of God is like, and he tells a story. Why does Jesus give so many answers to the same question? Well, maybe either they didn't understand the answer or they didn't like the answer and they wanted a different one. Often we don't like the answer Jesus gives. We still don't. The ways of God are like, hmm, let's see. Imagine a building contractor goes down to the town market square, 6 a.m. in the morning, and there are men there with their long sleeve cotton shirts on and their caps on. They are there as day laborers hoping to find work for the day. And the contractor calls the men over. One of them becomes the negotiator for all of them. His broken English will do for them. And they go back and forth and agree. $50 a day per man. The men wished for more. They needed more. If they could get $50 a day for every work day, by the end of the year, they would have about $13,000. And you know $13,000 isn't enough to feed your children and keep a roof over their heads and take them to the doctor when they need them and buy them clothes and shoes that wear out too fast. But remember, day laborers don't get to work every day of the year. Nebraska winters are harsh. There are months that they would go without work. And yet children are still hungry. $50 isn't much, but it's what they agree upon. And so they go to work. The contractor sends them off to work and comes back to the market square about 9 o'clock in the morning and finds that there are some more that have gathered there for work. And so he says to them, go work on my building and I will pay you what is right. That's a pretty loosely negotiated contract, but it's a job. It's something. They'll take it. Three hours later, the scene is repeated at noon. More workers are hired. And at five o'clock, standing in the heat, knowing the day is almost over, there are still some men there. The contractor approaches them and says, why haven't you gone to work? Why are you standing here idle all day? And the men replied, no one hired us. We thought we had a job, but the man never came. We had no work. So the contractor says, well, go work on my building over there, and I'll pay you what is right. The sun sets. The daylight fades. The workday is over. It's time for payday for day laborers. So the contractor tells his building manager to begin to pay the workers, and he calls up those who worked but one hour, the last ones hired, and he says, give them $50. They are overjoyed. They are thrilled. How could they imagine that they could be so fortunate and so lucky 
And so they walk away with great, great joy in their hearts. And so the men who worked from 3 o'clock on were called forward, and they too were given their $50. And then those that had gone to work at noon were called forward, and they too were given their $50. And those who worked at 9 o'clock, the same. And those that had been out working from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Those who had worked and sweated and labored under the hot Nebraska sun all day were also handed $50. And they grumbled. They grumbled. What? We worked all day and we got the same as those who only worked an hour? And the contractor said, that's what we agreed upon. You worked for what we agreed upon, and who are you to tell me I can't pay others whatever I choose to? They said, but you made them equal to us. Yeah, I did. Are you envious because I'm generous, he asked. You see, in Matthew 20, that's the story that Jesus tells the ways of God are like that. He says the last will be first and the first will be last. And Jesus looks at the disciples that had been following him the longest. And mother of two of the disciples asked Jesus, but my boys have been following you a long time. They gave up their fishing business to follow you. Surely they will be honored in your kingdom, yes? And the disciples grumbled. And Jesus sighed. And perhaps the memory from the words of the prophet Isaiah floated back into his awareness. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord, the God of Israel. See, depending on where you're standing in that worker line, in that story, you may not like what Jesus has to say in this story. Seems like we always assume we're the first ones up on that roof. We've been up there the whole day sweating under the sun. Or maybe... We've been the disciples walking along with Jesus down those dusty roads, mile after mile after mile. Or maybe we've been working in the church kitchen, washing dishes. Or maybe for decades we've been teaching children Sunday school classes and wiping dirty noses. Maybe we've been serving with our unit and our group. Maybe we've given our money even when times were hard for all those years. Harvesting wheat, fishing for God's people, serving the church. We don't like this story. We wail, but that's not fair. I've been here all along. They just got here. Try again, Jesus. We don't like your story. It's not that we don't like your God, we like your God, but tell us a story where your God sounds a lot more like us and then we could understand it better. Tell us if we work harder than somebody else, God will love us more. Tell us if we pray more than other people, God will love us more. That's what we understand. Tell us that story, Jesus. And Jesus says, the ways of God are like a tiny grain of mustard seed that grows into a big tree. No, 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 not that one, Jesus. We don't like that one either. And Jesus says, the ways of God are like the woman who mixed the yeast with the flour. No, 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 not that one. We don't like that one either, Jesus. And Jesus thinks, 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. All right, fine, Jesus, if everybody's going to get the same, no matter how long or how hard they work, I'll just slide in at the end. You know, baptize me on my deathbed and I don't have to do all those dishes in the kitchen or watch all those kids or do all of this or do all of that. I'll get my 50 bucks just like the suckers that have been working all their lives. Jesus is clear. The way of God does not fit the way of the world. Jesus never tells a story about the kingdom of heaven as a street paved with gold just beyond the pearly gates, exclusive to the people who have worked the hardest and been baptized the longest. That story's not there. Jesus told stories that are hard to hear and even harder to understand, who challenges who challenges us and reminds us that we are clearly not God. <laughs> Jesus tells us stories to teach us about God. Jesus told this parable to people who had been at it the longest, you might say. These were the Jewish people who had been following God's laws not just for their lifetime, but for generations, for thousands of years. They had been working for God all those generations. They had been obeying the laws, the kosher food laws, and the Sabbath laws, and the marriage laws, and the circumcision laws, for God's sake. Certainly they should get a little more for that, don't you think? And here comes Jesus in the first century saying something so hard to understand. Jesus is welcoming just anyone to the table of God's grace. Jesus is welcoming children and women and strangers and foreigners, political enemies. Those communities that formed around what Jesus taught were letting Gentiles, non-Jews, that's us, to come in and come near and to celebrate and be part of the kingdom of God, the realm of God. Jesus says the Jews are not the only ones chosen. All are chosen in this family. Certainly, the Jewish descendants expected that, that they would get something special but these promises of this new covenant of faith is extended to everyone? See, the good news is that Jesus persists in telling his stories. He persists in telling us the truth about ourselves and about God in order to help us grow and heal. When we get jealous when good things happen to others, when we are envious that others seem to get a more generous share, the truth is that Jesus invites us to look through a different lens than the world culture, than the one that we're used to. Jesus is always trying to turn the world upside down and help us to see it differently in God's kingdom. The last are included. What? In God's realm, the children are included. Mm. Over and over the stories, everyone is included. Everyone gets enough to feed their children. Everyone gets enough to be healed. Everyone gets enough. All are the same and welcome in God's realm to help us heal and let go of that which we would divide ourselves from one another, that which we would say we are better than those people, whoever those people are. 
See, the good news is Jesus tells stories and Jesus heals. He heals our spirits from envy and greed and jealousy and arrogance. And Jesus never gave up telling those great, challenging stories about ordinary life, about seeds and yeast and wheat and pearls and workers, day laborers, everyday workers. These are stories to open our eyes to see how God brings healing and wholeness and harmony into the world. That Jesus blesses and opens our minds to think in a more godly way. And the the truth is, those that have been in that relationship all of their lives, their eyes are open to see the blessings of walking that lifetime in that relationship. Jesus teaches God's ways and God's thoughts and shows us God's spirit that is within us. And that's salvation. Jesus gives us a vision of a world being healed of division and people being healed of our heartaches. Jesus gives a vision where all people have enough and no nations are destroying and killing the children of other nations. The really good news of the story is that we get to be a part of it. We get to be a part of God's kingdom come. We get to be a part of God's healing of the earth and God's healing of relationships and God's healing of divisions. The good news is we're not left standing without employment in God's kingdom. God has work for all of us to do. Till all the jails are empty, till all the bellies are filled, till there's no more blood that is spilled in this land or in any other, till all are free of greed and hate, God has work for us to do. We give thanks today for our labor, for our privilege of being invited into God's labor and God's realm of making all things new and bringing God's realm, God's kingdom near. May it be so. Amen.